Hi everyone, my name is Quinn Ambrosius. I'm a lieutenant with the City of Wausau Fire Department. Today we're going to show you how we conduct hazmat training and also show you guys our brand new hazardous incident response vehicle. Yeah, so when we think of fire department, we kind of think of exactly that word that's in the title, fire department. But we're also kind of more of an all hazards department. So not only do we deal with fire, EMS calls, but also hazmat and technical rescue. Today's training is more specific and technical down the hazmat route. So not every fire department has a specialized hazmat team like we do. Um, we're one of the state regional hazmat teams. You're talking Green Bay, La Crosse, uh, Milwaukee, Madison. So at any point, we can essentially be called anywhere in the state of Wisconsin to mitigate a hazmat incident. We can also join other teams if there's a big emergency that's over in Eau Claire. We can be called to help assist their hazmat team with either equipment or personnel. So some of the calls that we might respond to are something as simple as a propane leak in a small 20 pound cylinder, all the way up to something as large as a train derailment. Um, so we kind of have to be able to train and be able to mitigate incidents all within that spectrum. So we do have specialized members who can do specialized things at a hazmat scene, but all personnel are required to have at least a level of training that they can help during a hazardous incident uh, call. Yeah, so how a hazmat call usually starts off with is the first thing is first, receiving that phone phone call. Kind of understanding what exactly happened, um, building off of that call. So depending on how big the incident is, how dangerous it is, how many people we actually might need to respond. Uh, today's call came in as a leaking cylinder, um, but it was in the city of Wausau limits. So let's, let's have all crews kind of show up there until we figure out what it is, and then we can always send units back in service but we're gonna approach it kind of with a, with a heavy hand just to make sure that we can get through the call safely. After we get on scene, so we're gonna ask the staff members, kind of build us a picture of what your facility is, what kind of chemicals you're dealing with, and what we as a team might be dealing with. After we figure that out, our incident commander is gonna go ahead and take a position of assigning roles. Um, that might be an uh, entry team leader, to a decon team leader, to a research person. So all these roles will be filled out after that, they'll be dispersed. The teams will kind of do their own thing. Prior to any entry, we have a thing called the hazmat huddle. Uh, everyone gets into a circle, kind of like a, a huddle on a football field. We all get on the same page of what's going on and what our objectives are. After the hazmat huddle, we'll break away. The teams will actually make entry downrange. All of this is usually recorded. The radio conversations are going on. The entry team is telling Incident Command exactly what they're seeing. Um, not only is Incident Command listening, but the decon's listening. So everyone has a picture of what the entry team is actually seeing and what they're doing. Once they get to the incident, they're gonna take all appropriate actions. That might be something as simple as turning a valve, just shutting off a, a leaky valve, uh, as high as pulling some of the equipment off of this, this apparatus and putting a cap on top of a cylinder like we did today. After that, make sure there is absolutely no leak left inside that cylinder and that cap on, everything's holding in place. The team's gonna come back to the, where they made entry. The team's gonna all get together and have a debriefing of exactly what happened, what took place, and what, what was mitigated downrange, and if there is a need for another entry or not. Once that's all complete, we'll turn over the call back to the, to the, the facility we're at or the incident we're at, and allow them, give them uh, information on how they can kinda uh, move forward with their incident. Yeah, today was awesome to see the crews all working together. Again, every individual put in their place, performing their role, and allowing it to the scene to just build upon itself and get, get through this training successfully and safely. So this is the cab portion of our incident, our new hazardous incident response vehicle. Um, this is kind of what the members of the station were deploying. It is a crew cab, which is uh, fantastic. Our older piece of apparatus was just a little bit smaller. In this truck right here, in this cab, we can fit up to five um, firefighter paramedics to respond to that hazardous incident right in this vehicle. Inside the cab, so on the way to the call, um, whoever's sitting in the front passenger seat is going to be working on a lot of different things. You can see the cell phone mount and also the just a piece of paper. They're gonna be making all those phone calls, making all those contacts. They're gonna be calling whoever's on scene, um, asking them just to build them a picture of exactly what we're, we're actually pulling up to. Uh, we're moving on to the trailer portion. So this is kind of where all the magic happens. As you can see, we've broken up the trailer into two separate sections. We do have an operations section. The operations are the individuals who are going down range. They're pulling all the equipment off the vehicle and they're the ones who are actually gonna apply the equipment to stop the leak or stop the, the incident. 
Moving over to the back, we have the command area written on the door. Um, this is kind of where all the command staff sits. So we want that nice, cozy environment. They want to be isolated from all the noise and all the people who are talking. Um, they're going to be sitting here monitoring radios. They're going to be doing research. They're going to be looking up the chemical. Um, they're going to be providing that, that situation awareness, that incident command role right in the back of the track, uh, back of the trailer. So inside one of the outside cabinets here, we have specialized pools. Um, these pools are designed to be chemical resistant. So if we have a decon line set up where individuals maybe um, are coming back from the incident, need to be decontaminated, we'll set these pools up to collect any kind of water that we use or anything that we use to kind of clean off the individuals who are coming back. These pools are from small as like 75 gallons all the way up to like 200 gallons. Um, and they're collapsible and we can just kind of unfold them and fold them back up if we need to. And lastly, we have our SCBAs. So we have a polo tray here. So these are the self-contained breathing apparatus that you see firefighters wear on their back. So not only do we wear them on our backs for fire calls, but anytime we're in an environment that we need to breathe uh, clean, good air, we're gonna throw these on our back uh, to protect our lungs. All right, so let's take a look inside the actual trailer. We're gonna go in the first inside the operations area. Let's look at all the cool meters and fancy equipment that we carry. So starting off in the front of the trailer, um, First thing first, we have extra air bottles. We're gonna have, we're definitely gonna need extra bottles as we go and make multiple entries downrange uh, dealing with the incident. We also have decontamination tents that we can set up. In the very front of the trailer, you can't really see, but we do carry extra booms um, and pigs. Uh, we call them pigs. They're just like a, a small absorbent pad that we can put on waterways to collect any kind of uh, oils and hydrocarbons and, and gasoline spills. All right, inside here, this is kind of our, one of our main areas. We consider this area kind of our meter station. And you can see here we have lots of specialized equipment. Um, there's a lot of expensive stuff in here. We have meters as something as a radiological meter, so able to detect gamma radiation. So if we have some kind of a call uh, at the hospital or anywhere dealing with radiation sources, we have meters to detect that. We have a meter for refrigerants. So just based on refrigerants that we're leaking inside of a, inside of a business or a fixed facility. We also have meters that can detect uh, different things in the air, um, something as like carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide, uh, just tons of different chemicals just based on the sensors that are installed on these specialized meters. Up here, we have a really specialized tool. Um, it's called the Thermos Gemini. It uses two different technologies and it's able to help us figure out an unknown uh, solid or liquid. So if we're dealing with a powder, uh, it'll tell us in a database kind of what we're dealing with. And we can also, again, detect a liquid based, based on this machine right here. We also have spare batteries. On a long, prolonged incident, we're gonna be burning through batteries for our air packs. Our air packs are supplied with a battery to kind of run the, the digital electronics on board. So we have extra batteries just in case we're there for quite a while. Yeah, inside here, we have a plug and patch kit. So again, if we have a leaking pipe, maybe we can just go ahead and put a patch right over top of that and stop that leak. We also carry a radiation blanket. So if we do have a source that's given off gamma radiation or any radiation, we can walk up to that source and hopefully throw that lead blanket right over top and stop it from, from hurting us or other individuals. Um, also inside here, we carry a grounding and bonding kit in case we're transferring liquid from a tank to a tank. So inside here, we have more meters. If you think of these meters, they're kind of the smaller ones, but they're on steroids. Um, not only do they have a longer battery, but we also have an onboard weather station, and we also have a, a radio for wirelessly transmitting what the, what the meter is actually seeing back to the command post. So they all have re real-time data of exactly what this meter is looking at. So on this side, we just have basic lighting controls. We also have our generator control. What's great about this trailer is we have our own onboard diesel generator, which will actually power this entire trailer and charge everything on board without actually having to run the tractor. We also have automatic awnings. So these awnings, we're able to deploy, open them up with, with just a remote control, um, and they can be brought in the same way without someone actually physically having to, to bring them out. We also have uh, safe tools in here that don't cause any sparks. We might be inside of an environment that we don't wanna be anywhere near where it could be flammable or burn us. Um, our meters hopefully keep us safe, but we do have tools on board here that will not cause a spark. Yeah, so over here we have kind of a complicated uh, uh, crazy amount of controls here when it comes to the breaker panel. So right now the trailer is plugged in back at the station. We're charging all of our components, all of our equipment right here at the station. But when we actually move down the road, we'll turn our generator on and switch over and allow the generator to do the same thing and, and charge everything up. So this is our sampling area. We have lots of different detection papers on here. Um, we also have 
um, different jars and, and containers to grab a sample when the crews are downrange dealing with the threat. So they might bring back a liquid inside this container, um, draw things up, bring it back to an area where we can actually test it and confirm that we're actually dealing with what we think we're dealing with. And we have chlorine paper, we have pH paper, um, we have papers that are able to detect nerve agents. All right, so over here, we have just a small changing room. Um, again, in the summertime, we might be changing from this uniform into something as simple as shorts, throwing some shorts on before we put on that super heavy, uh, super um, cumbersome suit for protection uh, against a vapor. So as we move down, if you look here, most of these cabinets are just extra storage for level A suits across the top. A level A suit is what you think of hazmat, where that person's inside that huge encapsulated suit with the shield and the, the face shield up front. Um, this is level A. As we move over here, we have SCBA masks. So those air packs that we have on our back, we just have spare masks that team members can put on as they uh, enter the hot zone. We just have extra hard hats. When we're wearing some of these suits, we wanna protect our heads. Instead of wearing a fire helmet, we're gonna put one of these on. As we go down, we do wear specialized boots, but these are to protect us so we don't stand inside the actual hazardous material. The most important thing we have on board back here in this hallway is gonna be by far the refrigerator. Uh, again, people are gonna be hot. We wanna make sure we have enough water. All right, as we move back to the command zone, so this is kind of where the commanders of the incident or the ones who are actually running kind of overall operations, this is where they, they're gonna be sitting. Again, we have an extremely comfortable chair. They're gonna be in here for a while. They're not gonna be downrange and doing the hard work, but they're gonna be in here making sure everyone's safe and making sure that they have an overall picture of what's going on. We have two different computers. Someone can be working on research, looking up that specific chemical that we're dealing with, look at plumes, what if that, um, the chemical releases and the wind's taking it somewhere else. We have real-time mapping. Over here, we can also watch, do wireless monitoring. I talked about those really cool meters in the back. On the screen here, we can actually have real-time monitoring of what those meters are actually seeing downrange. So the commander can actually have a visual uh, cue of what the meters are seeing with the crews working next to the, to the properties. So my favorite part about this new setup is just the overall upgrade of everything on board. Uh, the tractor and trailer combo that we had before was about 33 years old and was just kind of meeting its end of life. Um, this has been a huge upgrade for us as a regional hazmat team and also a team that responds to the city of Wausau. Um, when it comes to just cabinet space, to the command area, to just some of the modern uh, amenities that we have on board, it's overall it's just been a huge upgrade from, from what we were riding in before. All right, well thank you guys so much for coming with us today. Not only did you get to watch us go through uh, hazmat training, but you also got a quick tour of the new hazardous incident response vehicle. All I have to say is thank you so much for all the years of support and supporting the fire department and what we do.